Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting coding interview question video today. Today guys, we are going to solve question number 1652, Diffuse the Bomb of Lead Code. Before I start with the video guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. Let's get started. So basically guys, the problem statement says that we have a bomb to diffuse and our time is running out. So we are given a circular array like this, okay? And uh, so what we have to do is this circular array of code to, it's sort of a code to diffuse the bomb, okay? And if you want to decrypt the code, we must replace every number of this code with a certain value, okay? All the numbers are replaced simultaneously. That means one after the another. And how to replace that number? So basically we are given a value called as k. Okay. So let's say these are our codes and this is our k value. This is sort of our key, right? So if the key value or the k value is equal equals to zero, if it's equal equals to zero, so we have to replace the ith number with zero. Or we can say that if k value is zero, then all the code values must be replaced to zero. If the k value is greater than zero, then we have to replace the ith number with the sum of the next k number. So for example, 5 has to be replaced with the sum of the next three numbers, which is 7, 1 and 4. So you can see that if I just scroll below, it 5 is replaced by 7 plus 1 plus 4. Then 7 is replaced by the sum of the next three numbers. But because this is a circular array, so after 1 and 4, the third number would be 5. So that's why the sum is 1 plus 4 plus 5. Similarly, 1 is replaced by 4 and the sum of 5 and 7. And 4 is finally replaced by the sum of 5, 7 and 1. Okay. So once we do this, then we get this array as a result. And we can just return this array. This is our decoded code. So once you have decoded the code, you can diffuse the bomb. Okay. Now if the k value is less than 0, then you just have to do the reverse. You have to replace the ith number with the previous k number. So for example, in this case, 5 will be replaced by the sum of 4, 1 and 7 because they are the previous uh, k numbers. Or I would say 4 will be replaced by 1, 7 and 5 because they are the previous k numbers. Okay. So another example you can see here that k value is 0 because k is 0. All the values of code are replaced by 0. And finally, this example is a negative example, which I have already explained you. So every number is replaced by the previous two numbers. So for example, 3 is replaced by the sum of 4 plus 9. Okay. The constraints are pretty straightforward, guys. N is the length of the coding array and the N could go from 1 to 100. So basically, there could be 100 values. Uh, the value of the code could be from 1 to 100. And the K value can go from minus N minus 1 to n minus 1 okay so basically the length of the array right so now that we know about the problem statement guys let's go to the solution part so to start off with the solution guys i am going to first of all declare our result array and to do that first of all i'll create an element called as len which is basically going to hold the length of the code array so code dot length now I'm going to declare the result array which I'm going to return. So int, res, uh, int bracket rest becomes equals to new int and pass the length. So now that we have declared the resultant array that we want to return. Okay. So the first thing, if k is equal equals to 0. So let's start with the base case guys because if we are done with the base case, then that's the simplest case, right? So for if k is equal equals to 0, so for integer i to 0, so i less than len i plus plus, we simply have to replace all the res elements with uh, 0. So res i becomes equals to 0. And uh, then we will do the else condition, else if k is greater than 0, some logic, and then else is when k is less than 0. Finally, when all the if else conditions are done, then we are just going to simply return the resultant array. Okay. So, uh, the first case is done. K is equal equals to 0. We uh, take all the uh, result elements 
and then we simply assign them 0 and we return the resultant array. Okay. So the second case. Second case is when k is greater than 0. So guys, if k is greater than 0, then we are going to iterate from, uh, then also we are going to iterate all the elements. So 0 to uh, i less than length, i plus plus. But then for every element, we are going to replace that element with the sum of the next k elements. So we are going to do another for loop for integer j equals to 1 to j less than equals to k j plus plus but instead of making res i becomes equals to 0 here we are going to replace res i or we are going to assign res i to the sum of the next j element so res i becomes equals to res i plus add the jth element to it okay or i would say i plus jth element to it so i plus j so let's say if i is 0 so for example i is 0 so the first element which we added is uh, the element at index 1 then the element at index 2 and then the element at index k like so on and finally all of them will be added to rest i and if we continue this for loop then all the resultant values will be the sum of their next k elements right but obviously guys if you do i plus j and let's say the value goes greater than the length of the array you are going to get an array index out of bound exception so to cater that situation you have to do the mod uh, mod of the i plus jth value with the length of the array if you do the mod guys what are you going to do for example if uh, my j is at position 3 so 3 plus 3 becomes equal to 6 if i do 6 mod 4 then i will reach to a value 2 which is index uh, I mean I reach to value 2 which is uh, the second index here so eventually I will add uh, I will add 1 and then I will go uh, behind and I will add all these values okay so basically if you mod it with length uh, you will start iterating from behind instead of the, or you will start iterating from the cyclic position so that's why uh, we are doing this so that even if our i plus jth value goes greater than length it will not give us the array index out of bound exception instead it will start iterating from the other side of the array okay or from the left hand side of the array now so we know if k is greater than 0, so that part is also sorted. Now comes the complex part. The complex part is when k is lesser than 0. So this part definitely guys we need. That means uh, iterating the ith value from 0 to i less than length i plus plus. So this thing we definitely need because we are going to replace all the values of the uh, resultant array. But because k is less than uh, 0 this time, we have to think about it from a different way. So because k is less than 0, instead of iterating from integer j to 1 to less than equals to k, we will create j becomes equals to minus 1 to j greater than equal to k. And this time, instead of doing j plus plus, we are doing j minus minus. Okay? Because remember, this is a negative value. Okay? So because this is a negative value, we cannot iterate it from 0 to k or 1 to k value, right? We have to go from behind, minus 1 to greater than or equal to k. Now, so we have got the negative value, right? And what index do we want to reach? Let's say, I want to iterate the previous element. So the previous element will become equals to i plus j, right? Because let's say, if my ith value, let's, let's uh, take this example. So if my ith value or my index value is 3 and my k value is minus 2. So I want minus 1. That means this one. So when j is minus 1, then minus 1 plus the ith uh, l value. So for example, in this case, i is 3. And if you subtract 1 from it, you will reach index 2. 
So index 2 will get added. And then when j will be in, uh, you know, minus minus, I would say. So when j will become from minus 1 to minus 2, that means this value, then i, will, i is still 3. So uh, 3 minus 2 becomes equal to 1. So eventually we will reach 4 and 9. And we are just going to simply add these two and store them in res value. Okay. So don't get confused why I'm doing i plus j because j is negative. See, even if I'm doing i plus j, I'm still going on an index which is previous to us. Okay. Remember that. Obviously, guys, the j value could be something which is greater than the length value. Okay. So i, my, i plus j could be a something... Uh, something like minus 4. For example, in this case, the maximum index is 3, right? So whatever it becomes, uh, what is, whatever it becomes minus 1, okay, or minus 4 something. So we don't want that. So that's why always do a mod with length so that we uh, reach at a value which is always contained inside our array. Now, if our index value, let's say my index value is greater than 0, then it's good. But what if my index becomes equal, for example, if my index is 0, right? If this is my index, if I am at this position and the kth value is minus 2. So my next index, if I go via this for loop, will be minus 1, right? 0, so i is 0, j is minus 1, 0 plus uh, minus 1 is minus 1, correct? So if I try to go to a position which is minus 1, I'm not going to find it anywhere, right? So if you always get an index which is lesser than 0, then it basically means you have to go to a position which is previous to it. So for example, if I am at minus 1, if I add minus 1 to the length of the array, length of the array is 4, add minus 1 to the length of the array, so what is going to happen you are going to reach to the last position similarly when you will come to minus 2 for example if i have i0 first j will be minus 1 second j will be minus 2 so then i will reach minus 2 here if i add minus 2 to my length i will reach the second last uh, guy so that's what you have to do if your index is lesser than 0 then just add the index to the length of the array by this, you will actually start iterating the array from the uh, other side, okay, from the behind. Finally, res i will become equal to res i plus code of index, okay. Then, once this else is completed, you have covered all the cases, so just return res. So, let's run this code, guys. Let's see if this works for our example cases. Uh, Okay, there is some error. Okay, fine. Uh, I wrote return rest multiple times, so you just have to write it once. So you can see that uh, the example case is accepted. And yes, you can see that the solution is also accepted. Now talking about the time complexity, guys. So the time complexity for this solution is uh, going to be n into k. Because we know that the length of the array is order of n and the number of times we are adding the k elements is always k, right? This is the for loop which, which we are running k times. So that's why the time complexity is order of n into k. The space complexity, guys, is order of n because we are creating another resultant array which is having the same length as that of our original code array, okay? Uh, but I hope guys that uh, this solution was clear to you and it works for you as well. And hopefully it helped you in, imp in improving your coding practice. If it did guys then please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel then please subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications. And uh, also guys... Uh, Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, write down in the comment section below. I would be happy to read them and work on them. Uh, so thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.